Welcome to Electron Line. Now that we know the two equations that we can use to determine the mass of two stars in a binary star system, let's do an example. So here we have two stars, a small one and a large one. The distance between them is a, that's the semi-major axis of the orbit. The distance to the center mass for the small one is a1, and the distance to the center mass for the big one is a2. And the two equations are that the ratio of the two masses is equal to the distance between them divided by the distance to the center mass of the small one, minus 1, that's when the small one is on top, and the sum of the two masses must equal a cubed divided by p squared, which came from Kepler's third law and Newton's law of motion and Newton's law of gravity, I should say. And so let's say in our example that the period is 10 years, that the small star takes 10 years to revolve around the large star, that the distance between the two is 6 astronomical units, and the distance to the center mass for the small star is 4.5 astronomical units, and we're supposed to find the mass of the two stars. So the first thing we're going to do is find the ratio of the two stars. So we know that m1 divided by m2 is equal to a divided by a sub 1 minus 1. And so a is the distance between them, which is 6 astronomical units divided by the distance for the small star to the center mass, which is 4.5 astronomical units, minus 1. So 6 divided by 4.5, that would be 4 thirds minus 1, which 4 thirds minus 1 is 1 third. So that means that the ratio of the small mass to the large mass is 1 third, which means the small mass, the small star, has 1 third the mass of the big star. So we can say that from this, m1 is equal to one-third the mass of the large star. Okay, now we go ahead and use that equation. We know that the sum of the two, m1 plus m2, is equal to the distance between them cubed divided by the period between them squared, the distance being six astronomical units, which is cubed, divided by the period, which is 10, and that is squared. And of course, we know that the units end up to be solar masses. So the mass will be in terms of the mass of the sun. So this is uh, 216 divided by 100, which is 2.16. So here we know that m1 plus m2 is equal to 2.16. Now we have to solve the two equations simultaneously. So we're going to substitute for m1. We're going to say m1 is one third m2, or we can write that m2 is three times m1. That's probably easier to do. So from here we can say that m2 is equal to 3 times m1, and let's substitute that in, Oop, right there. Okay, doing that, we have m1 plus m2, which is 3 times m1, is equal to 2.16, so that means that 4 times m1 is equal to 2.16, which means that m1 is equal to, looks like 0. Point, that would be 5, 4, and of course that would be the mass of the sun. So the units always are going to be in terms of the mass of the sun. So we could say that would be the mass of the sun times mass of the sun times the mass of the sun, which means we determine now that the small star is about half the mass, has about half the mass of the sun. So what about the large star? Well, since the large star is three times that, we could say that M2 is equal to three times the mass of M1, which is three times 0.54 times the mass of the Sun, which means that's equal to 1.62 times the mass of the Sun, and that would be M2. And you can see that with those two equations and some measurements, which may sometimes take years, we can actually figure out the mass of stars in binary star system. So again, since we have all these various ways of determining the mass and then have the mass-luminosity relationships and have the Stefan Boltzmann's law and Wien's law and we have the filters by which we make measurements, through all the various ways in which we can calculate the, the luminosity, the mass, and the, um, and the radius of the stars, we can then put all that information together and come up with fairly reasonable estimates calculations that give us a fairly good value for the various things such as the radius, the luminosity, and the mass of stars. None of these are going to give you exact values. There's always some errors and some uncertainties in the measurements, but as we get more and more of these things put together, we'll get a better and better idea of the relationship in stars between the luminosity, the mass, and the size. And so that's this, this is what it's all about. Over time, we'll get better and better measurements, better and better idea, and better understanding about the nature of stars, and that's what it's all about.